half of all adults in the U.S. have now received at least one shot of the COVID-19 vaccine. And as of today, all adults are eligible. And as a result, even Republicans are admitting they're having a hard time criticizing President Biden. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. As horrific and nightmarish as the pandemic has been, and it is by no means over, especially throughout the rest of the world, we are now hitting some genuinely exciting milestones. The race to vaccinate hitting two major milestones today. The CDC reports that 50% of all adults have received at least one vaccine dose and 25% of all Americans are now fully vaccinated. Starting today, every adult across the nation is eligible to get a COVID shot. Folks, I have good news. Everybody is eligible as of today to get the vaccine. We have enough of it. You need to be protected, and you need in turn to protect your neighbors and your family. So please, get the vaccine. When I think back to the lowest points of this hellish year, there were times when it was impossible to imagine the progress we're seeing now. There were times when I honestly thought there was a chance I'd be locked in the captain's quarters, talking to a painting for the rest of my life, urinating into jars, growing a long scraggly beard, and rolling my eyes at dumb maritime theme puns. Thankfully, thankfully, that ship has sailed. I'm sorry. Half of adults have now gotten at least one shot and all adults in the U.S. are eligible. It's a dramatic achievement worthy of celebration, especially considering where we were just a few months ago. Before the previous president left office, the vaccine rollout was in chaos. His administration had passed on the opportunity to buy more vaccine, and they'd made all kinds of wild and obviously insane promises, like the time Trump's chief of staff said they'd have 100 million doses by October and enough vaccine for every American by January. We use all of our regulatory tools to bring vaccine available for the entire American population by January. You know, uh, in terms of the number of vials, what we're shooting for is to try to make sure that we have 100 million doses in that first tranche. And so those that 100 million doses certainly is uh, uh, the benchmark that we've set. Uh, from there, there would be a second tranche that would get us up to the 300 million uh, plus doses. Uh, that timeline for the 300 million is, is uh uh, set as a, uh, a January timeline in terms of what we're looking at. He's so cagey. He's talking about vaccine distribution like he's telling a loan shark when he can expect his money. Ah, I'm going to get you your money. I got a job now and I stopped gambling. No more betting on the ponies for me. No siree. Oh, when can I have it by? Uh, let's see. The Kentucky Derby is the first Saturday in May. So the first Sunday in May? <laughs> and yes, when Biden took office and only promised 100 million shots in the first 100 days, that was clearly a lowball number. But it made sense to set lower expectations after the last guys overpromised on everything every time they opened their mouths. Not only do we think we will have 300 million vaccines by January, but we are now closer than ever to getting every American the nootropic pill, NZT48, also known as the Limitless pill, taken by Bradley Cooper in the film Limitless. And as a reminder, this is a pill that will allow us to use our whole brain with no side effects. At least I think that's the case, as I will admit I only watched the first tranche of that movie. Anyway, that obviously all turned out to be bull the Trump administration had no interest in actually overseeing an effective vaccine rollout, so they just passed it off to the states. And it was initially a disaster. Biden, meanwhile, secured deals to buy more vaccine, brokered deals between rivals to produce more vaccine, and quickly ramped up a plan to use FEMA to set up federally run mass vaccination sites across the country, which for some reason Trump failed to do. Maybe because he didn't know what FEMA stood for and was too embarrassed to ask. Sir, we should coordinate between HHS and FEMA. Right, right, right. The federal elegant modeling agency, is that right? So the models, they would administer the vaccines. And only tens, right? Nobody's going to roll up their sleeve for a seven, I can tell you that. But as encouraging as the vaccine rollout has been here in the U.S., it's been much less encouraging throughout the rest of the world, thanks in large part to vaccine hoarding by wealthy countries. Global COVID cases just hit a new weekly record, making this the worst week worldwide since the start of the pandemic. And that's why we need a more just and equitable distribution of vaccines to developing nations. So far, high-income countries already own more than half of all global doses purchased. And it's estimated that there will not be enough vaccine doses to cover the world's population until at least 2023. Meanwhile, the U.S. could have 300 million extra vaccine doses by the end of July. Let's send those extra vaccines to countries that need them. We certainly don't need them here. As a country, we don't do well with excess. We'll start having raves where Wall Street bros and social media influencers pass vials of Pfizer in bathrooms while dancing poorly to club music. Shots, 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 shots. <laughs> hey, man. 
Hey, man, you want a hit of this uncut Pfizer? You'll have a sore arm for a few days, but then you'll be you, uh, so guy high. I was thrown by the shots. It was in the script, but I still forgot what it would sound like. Shots, 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 shots. Now it's coming back. Uh, it's like sense memory, you know? I was like, what is that jarring sound? And then I'm like, oh, right, the club. Also, it's in our own interest to share our vaccines as well. If we don't slow down the spread of the virus around the world, then more variants will emerge, and we can't just stop them from coming here by encasing the U.S. in a protective bubble like we're in some Stephen King novel or the Simpsons movie. Almost identical plots. Crazy, but it's true. Nonetheless, there's hope on the vaccine front, so much so that Biden's approval numbers in a recent poll are as high as 59%, with only 39% saying they disapprove. And now, as a result of Biden's early popularity, a weird thing is happening, which is Republicans are basically admitting they don't know how to criticize him. After four years of a cruel, unpopular, crazy person who never won the popular vote, never cracked 50% job approval, or a 50-degree angle on his spine, Republicans can't quite figure out how to attack a president who is well-liked and whose policies are popular. John Thune, the number two Senate Republican, said, I don't think sometimes our messaging is as sharp as it should be because a lot of the things they're doing are things that are popular. When you're spending money, you're popular. He added to Biden, his tone is moderate and he's an affable person. He's a likable individual and a lot of us know him, have relationships with him, and it's probably harder to attack someone who is relatable and likable. Relatable likable and doing popular things. What is he, some kind of sorcerer? How does he do it? They're watching Biden like a bunch of prehistoric apes watching man make the first stone tools. Well, this isn't gonna be fair now. Remember, Republicans have only won the presidential popular vote once in the last 32 years. They're used to being unpopular and just having the edge because of our unfair electoral system. They're genuinely befuddled by a president who's likable, doing popular stuff, even if it's obvious to the rest of us. Republicans are so desperate to criticize Biden, their only move is to call him a puppet. Yesterday, Fox News interviewed GOP Congressman Devin Nunes, who, speaking of puppets, looks like his eyes were hastily sewn onto his face. Remember that guy? He always looks like the claw machine dropped his beanie baby at the last second. Nunes suggested that there was actually some secret group of puppet masters pulling the strings behind Biden. The question is, is we don't see a lot of Biden every day. Um, I don't know, you know, but of course, nobody's really calling him out on, you know, what is his schedule? What is he actually doing? I think a lot of us wonder, and we didn't even see him in the, in the campaign. So, uh, you know, somebody clearly is behind the scenes controlling uh, the building these narratives out, and they, they put their people out and their mouthpieces. It's true that you never heard Trump speak or read one of his tweets and thought, who's making him? say that, but come on, Biden was literally just in the Rose Garden for a press conference with the Prime Minister of Japan on Friday. I know you guys only go on Fox News, but do you also only watch Fox News? I'm guessing anytime Biden gives a speech, Fox throws to some emergency standby episode of Janine Pirro's short-lived wine tasting show, Janine Pino. Now, the first thing we always do is inhale the bouquet. <laughs> Smells like wine to me, <laughs> which means we're on to step two, downing it in one big-ass gulp. And they answer your question, no, you cannot have my keys. <laughs> also, you really have questions about what Joe Biden does all day? Say what you want about the guy, but he has the energy of a grandpa who insists on getting up at 4 a.m. to go for his daily power walk on the side of the highway. Grandpa, just stay in the cul-de-sac. I like to dodge the cars. It keeps me in shape. Give me my three pounders. Trump, meanwhile, spent so little time in the Oval Office, they could have rented it out on Airbnb, which, by the way, would have been a great early 2000s comedy starring Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn. Oh, geez, that's a bust to Abraham Lincoln? I thought that was an ashtray. Buddy, 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 we gotta get out of here, buddy. I just hooked up with the Secretary of State and now she won't leave me alone. We gotta go, buddy. <laughs> Similarly, Texas Senator John Cornyn suggested last week that Biden was perhaps being controlled by a secret group of leftists when he quoted a political article about Biden's communication strategy and added this, invites the question, is he really in charge? On Sunday, Cornyn was asked about that tweet and blame Twitter. My question, I guess, is, Senator Cornyn, is that helpful to be sending out a tweet questioning the President Biden's mental faculties? Well, Chris, thank you for the question, because I think there's been a lot of confusion in the Twitterverse about that. That actually was a quote from a Politico story that I pasted into a tweet, and then I simply asked a question. Man, I never want to hear a man your age say the word Twitterverse. It's like watching your dad twerk. Dad, knock it off. You're getting loose change everywhere. That's how at a loss these guys are to criticize Biden. And by the way, that's not to say there aren't things to criticize. There absolutely are. For example, last week, Biden announced, then quickly walked back his decision to break a campaign pledge and keep in place the historically low cap 
on refugee admissions set by the Trump administration rather than lift it as he promised during the election. The Biden administration tried to reverse that announcement after progressives and refugee advocates were rightfully outraged. Today, NBC News has learned the Biden administration intends to keep the cap for refugee admissions at 15,000. This according to a senior administration official. It is a historically low level set by the previous Trump administration. The Biden administration is now reversing course on its announcement that it would keep the refugee cap of 15,000 set by the Trump administration after facing fierce backlash from some progressive Democrats. On Twitter, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez condemned the decision saying, quote, it's completely and utterly unacceptable. Biden promised to welcome immigrants, and people voted for him based on that promise, upholding the xenophobic and racist policies of the Trump administration, including the historically low plummeted refugee cap, is flat out wrong. Keep your promise. Pramila Jayapal, a House member who's the leader of the Progressive Caucus, saying, quote, it is simply unacceptable and unconscionable that the Biden administration is not immediately repealing Donald Trump's harmful, xenophobic and racist refugee cap that cruelly restricts refugee admissions to a historically low level. Sources say that President Biden has resisted raising the Trump era cap on refugees because of bad political optics. I'm sorry, you were worried about optics? What's worse in terms of optics? Breaking a campaign promise to lift a cruel and historically low refugee cap set by a racist predecessor or tripping upwards on the stairs three times. And again, the best part of the three trip walk up, the salute at the end to save it. Look, we all trip, it's fine. It's like when you eat shit on an icy sidewalk then give everyone a thumbs up. As for the optics, Republicans are never ever gonna give you credit for anything, so stop chasing it. Republicans are like an emotionally distant dad from the 50s who sends you to boarding school where you could get straight A's, but if you're five minutes late for dinner, he'll say something cutting without looking up from his paper like, you call yourself an Exeter man. Voters were craving competent governments after four years of cruelty, racism, and neglect, and now they're rewarding Biden for it in the polls. The left absolutely must keep pushing him on issues like refugee admissions and global vaccine distribution because Biden is clearly willing to react to pressure from progressives. As for Republicans, all they seem capable of doing is spending their time whining in the Twitterverse. This has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.